All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we have a Houston Rockets video on Houston Rockets Daily. If you guys enjoy this video, you like daily Houston Rockets content, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're about 71 subscribers away from 1,000 subs, so thank you guys so much for trying to hit that by the end of the year. Quick little video today. Um, I want to start just like directly addressing your guys' questions and comments in video format because i just got a comment oh, man i really apologize i don't remember who it was i literally just saw the comment and i'm like this is a really good comment i'm gonna make a video on it so shout out to whoever dropped this comment but the comment basically was in a redraft would you draft Jalen green at number two and if so why so personally um i still am drafting Jalen green at number two now okay cunningham i'm mean, that guy's a certified stud i think career 17 and seven and seven Evan Mobley, he's also a stud. Uh, Scotty Barnes, absolute stud. So it was a really good draft class. Um, here's the thing. Jalen Green dropped 30 points in his third NBA game. 30 points. Um, inconsistencies really have left a sour taste in people's mouths. I don't think many Rocket fans are worried. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't see Rocket fans commenting on my videos saying like, Man, we should have drafted Evan Mobley. We should have drafted Scotty Barnes. We should have traded for Kate Cunningham. Fuck Jalen Green, yada, yada, yada. You know, sometimes you will. You know, you'll get the occasional comment like that. But for the most part, um, everyone's just really excited for Jalen Green to come back. So for me, I, I really like Jalen Green. And obviously, I really like his game. I talk about this all the time. But 11 points in just 10 minutes when Daniel Tice was out of the starting lineup right before he got injured against the Chicago Bulls a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they were using him properly. He had space to create. KPJ had space to create. So I think really what it boils down to is first off, the Rockets lost 15 straight games with Jalen Green. I mean, it's hard to, when you're losing and losing and losing and losing right when you get into the NBA and you have you know, Twitter people calling you saying, man, why the hell did we draft this bus? This dude's a bus, blah, 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 blah. I imagine that it took him at least a couple of weeks to get, you know, as confident as a person and player as he is, I bet you it's it took him a little bit to kind of get settled in. And I bet you um, he's still kind of trying to get settled in. But for the most part, I bet he's relatively comfortable, especially after seeing all the love um, during his injury. So he looks good right now. You know, he's running full court layup lines um, at the United Center yesterday. I think Jalen Green is exactly what the Houston Rockets needed. I mean, we're still kind of trying to find our culture and to establish our culture. And I don't want to call us the bad boys, but like KPJ, Jalen Green, I mean, Josh Christopher, these guys have a certain demeanor to them. Even Alperin Shangoon, where it's like, maybe not Shangoon because he, he's pretty quiet. But the three I just mentioned, like once these guys start getting picking up, I mean, Jalen Green flexed on Kate Cunningham in his first time playing him. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people hate that cockiness, but I absolutely love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of Jalen Green flexing on Kate Cunningham and then losing. I don't care if he flexes, but I want him to back up his talk. You got to back up the talk. And when you're a rookie, I mean, you really need to back that talk up. So I imagine Jalen Green, the next time he plays Kate Cunningham, next time he plays the Detroit Pistons, I don't know when that day is going to be because we just played him. I guarantee you he goes off. I guarantee you. I mean, he's going to find a way to go off and try and win that basketball game. And hopefully we do. So Jalen, I think a, I think a good portion as well should be looked at KPJ. KPJ in the first couple of weeks of the season was really struggling. You know, he's struggling shooting the ball. He still kind of is. Um, but he was really struggling shooting the ball. He was turning the ball over like four times a game consistently. He was literally averaging four turnovers a game. He was only getting like four or five assists a night. And we were having, you know, internal dialogue like in my live streams in my comment section like is kpj an issue like is he our future point guard because a lot of people view kp even rocket fans a lot of people view kp as a shooting guard you know he's never really played point guard before and personally i love him at the point guard position i think i think it's going to work out just fine and basically what i'm trying to say here is i think kp was going through his own struggles Jalen was going through his own struggles and you combine that as a backcourt 
and it, it I mean, if you're both struggling that's an issue and these players are so young that it's gonna take them a while it's it's a learning experience it's a learning curve it's gonna take them a while so kp what it happened he said after when he first got injured when he first tweaked his thigh he said he went back he looked at film and saw in himself like hey i'm not playing the way i usually play i need to go back to my old ways i need to go back to just being me i don't want to try and be somebody i'm not i need to just go out there and play my game and what does kp do in our little winning streak when he came back from injury he goes off for nine assists twice i mean he drops like 11 assists it's more consistent so what was the result i mean daniel tice was out of the starting line or what was the reason tice is out of the starting lineup like i said if you have in the same starting lineup jay sean tate who can't shoot the ball and strives to be in the paint christian wood and daniel tice if those are your three play if you have those three if that you have that lineup of three out there at any point i i, I find it very very difficult for a guy like jalen green or kpj who both like getting downhill and getting that first step beating their defender on their first step they're gonna struggle because there's gonna be three dudes all game who are trying to just feast in the paint because that's the way they play so i have zero worry for jalen green i think he can be that guy i mean i love his confidence i absolutely love his confidence it's just i honestly i'm so excited and i'm i'm equally excited for kpj to return as well because i think there's also kind of a little bit of a sour taste um in our mouths for him too because last season he showed a lot of glimpses the man dropped 50 and 11 against the defending champions or the team that went on to win the finals that season so there's potential there but this season in that losing streak it was sloppy it wasn't efficient and there are several reasons for that but i think once kp comes back once jalen green comes back which i'm pretty sure um kevin will be back in like six days i don't know if we play on the 26th or the 27th but i'm pretty sure that's the return date for him jalen green wouldn't be surprised if that's the day he decides to go as well so we just gotta be patient for like at least at the absolute most two weeks um like a week or two you know i'm thinking seven to ten days is when we'll be seeing both of those or jalen green return and then only six seven days five six seven days until kevin Porter jr comes back so this Rockets team, man, I can't wait. I literally cannot wait to see what happens when those two cats come back. Because even if they're not winning basketball games at a very consistent level, like even if you're still going every three games, you're going one and two every single week, they're so exciting that they, they have enough young talent that these are still very watchable games. Last night's game against the Chicago Bulls, it's nights like that where you, you really realize like, man, when we get Kevin, when we get Jalen back, we're going to be really fun to watch because it was there was glimpses in that game, and the Rockets have been really fun to watch even without those two cats. But sometimes you do have those bad games, especially against a really solid team like the Chicago Bulls. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That is the longest dryer finish noise I've heard in my whole life. It's still going. Can you guys hear that? It's over now. It took like 15 seconds. That's it for today, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And once again, if you have any video ideas you want me to tackle or if you want me to do um, like a hot take video or kind of like a Q&A for the Rockets, I am going to be live streaming soon. I think I've, I think my channel, I think this channel finally got approved to live stream. So thank you guys for all the support. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's see you guys later.